Okay, so this is where we're at with the last script. We've created the form, but um, so right now what we're gonna do is basically take this form and uh, get it into a 3D printable format. Um, and to do that, I'll show you the steps. So this is what we had before, but I'm gonna change up the script a little bit um, and produce a different um, result. So let me show you that. So I'm changing the the number of sides to three, and it made it a bit smaller. The hole's a bit smaller, so I'm gonna have to increase the the size of the of the radius. So if nine is a bit small, I'm gonna try about fifteen. I'm going to pull it back to a 12. I'm going to also increase the size here to 14. And it is, like I said before, it is really heavy because it is uh, it's doing a lot of calculations at the same time. So I'm trying to get it to a point where it will print. Um, so let me show you also. So the offset that we're doing on the inside, I'm gonna decrease that to a 12, just so it's not so such a drastic form change. And I'm just testing the limits here of um, what I can, you know, subtract from the original form without it actually, you know, needing supports or, you know, for it to have a hard time staying together when I try to print it. So here we're getting, you know, really close to, you know, the end of what we could do here. Um, what I'm thinking is I'm going to decrease the size, but uh, also dig decrease the fillet size of the of the of the shape so I'm gonna take this maybe to a 10 but do a fillet radius of like a 2 This also cuts down on the amount of plastic you would be using um, if you were making this a complete solid. It would take up a lot more, you know, plastic. And I'm happy with this form, so I'm going to go ahead and go to the end here, and I'm going to bake it. And so now we can take this form move it to the side and this is the form that we're so we have to turn this into a mesh and I've already messed around with the with the settings the best settings I have found are these let me show you here 
so select that one and for density I put one maximum angle I put one aspect maximum aspect ratio I put one um, minimum edge length I put 0.5 maximum ed edge length I put uh, 0.5 maximum distance edge to surface 0.5 and minimum initial uh, grid quads one and this gives me a, um, a mesh that is you know defined enough to 3d print but not so uh, so tight that I can't even work with because sometimes if you use the settings and you, and you put them at the super high quality you won't be able to you know it'll be so heavy that it's, it's hard to even um, get to export and, and, and it's just really hard to work with so what I do here is under display I change the the mesh wires I can hide those and that way it's not so heavy and as you can see this is the form that I'm gonna be um, printing so once you have it as a mesh you do want to export it so you go to file export selected and you want to export it as an STL the STL file is going to be um, compatible with the software that you're going to be slicing the 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 model with so I'll show you that in a bit so for now I'll place, place this in the folder um, model and then STL file so okay so there we have that STL file and we could also go ahead and, and save this So I'll save that here. And now that we have that all worked out, it's just a matter of going here and finding your STL file. And you are going to have to use a, a different program, different uh, software called uh, Cura. It's Ultimaker Cura. It is a free, 100% uh, free software. So um, go ahead and drag that into that program. What this program does is it basically uh, takes your model and it creates the path that you, the nozzle is going to be taking and it gives the directions to the machine, uh, which is called the G-code. It's basically a code of lines that tells the machine uh, what to do. So it's, that's what this, this does and it, uses, it reads STL files. So as you can see here, this is going to be the size of the... Uh, of what we're printing and here on the side you have all the you know the different settings for now I'm just going to be using um, you know the settings that that um, that kind of came with the with the software but if you have any questions I can give you all the settings um, so it basically will prepare this um, and it'll give you an amount of time that it takes to 3D print. So, what I'm doing is I'm increasing the amount of um, surface area that I create at the bottom uh, when it starts printing, so it doesn't just fall off when because sometimes it cools down too fast and it falls off. So I'm using a brim, which is a extra plastic that is uh, printed at the beginning. So that's basically what you do here and so I'm just gonna prepare it and it's sl basically slicing your your model and it gave me a 1206 minute um, so it's, it's a 12 hour print which is not too bad so I'm gonna go ahead and save that I'll have all of this uh, for you to download also. And 
And so this is basically the resulting G code that I just saved. And I'm gonna open it again with that same software to give you an idea of how the 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 3D printer works and um, how the slicing software did the did the work. Okay, so it finished uh, um, loading the G code, and it does take a while because it is, it's uh, quite a big file. So this is you can see there's 860 layers. And as you can slide down here, you'll see that it creates more and more layers at the bottom, and that's called infill. So it just fills in the solid, um, the solid parts, and that's the base. So as you can see, we're going to be printing up in this form. And so um, stay tuned for the updates um, on the 3D printing. I will make sure to add all of this and have it ready for you to download. Um, let me know if you have any questions and hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you very much for watching. So this is what they turned out like. Um, I did this one with a little bit of a l larger pattern. And as you can see, it's a bit thicker also. And then I did this one with a uh, more dense pattern. And it's a little bit thinner and scaled down. So I'm going to be using it to be putting, you know, my pencils in. And so, yeah, uh, I just wanted to show you the final result. This one took about 13 hours and this one took about 10 hours. So mm -hmm. anyway, just wanted to give you a... a a look at the final results.